Hey, y'all need a break. Listen to these stories from r slash ask reddit. What's the creepiest or most unexplained thing you've seen in broad daylight? Weird intersection near my house that about three months ago started to be torn down for being too dangerous, replaced by a roundabout. Funny thing is, it was a normal intersection, four directions, two lanes in, two lanes out with dedicated left turn lanes. Except, just about every week, someone crashed there. Every month we'd hear of a near fatality or worse. Police couldn't figure it out so they started to petition for them to change it, they changed the light pattern and reduced speeds, which brought total crashes down but here's the F thing, serious injuries tripled. It got so bad they posted cops permanently to monitor the intersection, and what they noticed was, if they watched the intersection, non-stop, nothing would happen but the instant you take your eyes off it, someone would speed through a red light or make a left turn on red. They then finally tried one last thing, remove two of the lights, in favor of stop signs on one of the roads. First day there was a multi-car pile up, second day there was a minivan rollover, third day the mayor's daughter hit someone going 50. Day 4, intersection was closed for construction. 2008 mountain bike race in the Midwest. It was 100 degrees that day. Almost no oxygen in the woods. It was a hot day. Three of us were well ahead of the pack. We were about to lap another racer when he just rode off the trail and down a steep ravine. All three of us stopped. The ravine was steep and very deep. We found his bike halfway down. We never found the racer. They sent search party and found nothing. To this day he's never been found. When I was a teenager, I was at a friend's house when his parents and family were not home. I was on his back porch tying my shoes then I went back into his house. Tying my shoes, a 20 second action. No. I walk inside and his entire family is back home and they're sitting at the kitchen table eating dinner, and they ask me what I am doing here. They're staring at me like I am crazy and asking why I just walked into their house. I ask for the time, they tell me it is 6.30 pm. I lost an entire hour doing a 20 second action. To this day I still have no clue what happened or where the time went. When I was a little girl, I was playing in my room one morning with my sister. I looked out my window and saw a man staring in at us. I told my sister to leave my room and ran to get my father. He didn't believe me and thought I was crazy. Needless to say, I had an awful hard time sleeping that night. Throughout my childhood, I'd hear what sounded like footsteps outside at night, or my parents' car doors opening long after they had went to sleep. Several years later, I looked at our house on Google Maps. I always assumed we lived by ourselves in the woods, far from anyone else. It turns out there was a small house that looked like it was being lived in only a few hundred yards in the woods from us. My family was less skeptical of my crazy stories after I showed them that. When I was 15, my family went on a cross-country trip and one night we camped in the Grand Canyon. We went to a ranger lecture around 6 p.m., this is summer, so it was still pretty light when we were walking back. We went off the trail as a shortcut and after walking a ways noticed a light up ahead. As we drew closer there was a man sitting at a desk in the woods with a lantern. Just a full wood office-sized desk in the middle of the woods. I distinctly remember he had long sideburns and feeling like he was dressed like a man from the 1800s. My dad backed us down towards the trail and we went on our way. The man never made a peep or looked up or acknowledged us. There were two adults and three teenagers and we all remember the event really clearly. I don't believe in ghosts or spirits but have no explanation for what I saw. As I got older I figured I was misremembering but everyone else in my family says they saw the same thing. In college I lived on the 11th floor in an apartment with no balcony and it was about 4.30 in the afternoon. I watched a man walk into my apartment about 10 seconds before I walked in, and habitually bolted the door behind me, it locked automatically on the outside. I was living with three roommates at the time so I just figured they were having guests over, no biggie. I put my stuff on the couch and went towards the back bedroom to say hi to whoever came over. My roommates had no idea what I was talking about. It wasn't a big apartment but I searched everywhere. My roommate stayed in the back bedroom sufficiently freaked out. There was no one else in the apartment and the door was still bolted from the inside. He's in the walls. Crossing at a busy intersection and seeing my perfect double walk towards me. We basically eyes locked until we passed each other. A total mind F. Even more disturbing. Instead of stopping and chatting and being amused by the entire biological coincidence. My immediate subconscious reaction was a massive rising internal rage that someone, somehow had, stolen my face. Very, very weird. I grew up in a pretty rural area of the United States on a decent sized corn slash soybeans farm, that is about half and half farmland and forests. Naturally my friends and I really enjoyed goofing off in the woods as kids, right up until we all left for college or other post-high school endeavors. The land is kind of rolling hills, but nothing crazy, 
and most of the land in every direction we had thoroughly explored. There really wasn't many nooks or crannies left, but hands down the creepiest thing that ever happened was when I was out in the woods alone, of course, on a bright hot sunny August day. Now the forest behind the farm had an almost bowl-shaped topography to it, in that the middle was a depression that for most of the year was a swamp, which was very difficult to get through. Like I said though, I'd seen just about everything for a good distance into those woods, including this cool old blue car from the 1940s, it was some kind of Studebaker, that had been parked by the edge of the swamp at one point long, long ago, however the borders of the swamp had shifted many times and on this particular day the car was sitting in swamp water almost up to its windows. This wasn't anything new, but what was new was the man, woman. I don't know, sitting in the driver's seat. Whoever they were, they had long dirty blonde hair with colorful but dirty streaks almost like painted in. The best way I could describe it would be like if a girl painted her hair like an old times clown and then fell in a mud puddle. Of course this freaked me the f out as soon as I saw it, heart pounding adrenaline pumping the whole nine yards. I was facing the driver's side of the car, and while I was scared crapless initially, I scrambled to the left towards, and somewhat away from, the front of the car to put some distance between me and the car but I didn't outright bolt. Again, it was a bright, sunny, beautiful summer day. Nothing to be too afraid of, I mean I thought I was pretty confident in my youth that I could outrun whatever was in that car. I peeked around the corner of a tree and with my new vantage point, it was immediately clear that it was just some old JC Penny mannequin with a wig on. Still creepy as f as it hadn't been there ever before, but I had to admit whoever put it there had got me. Then it turned its head and those pupil-less cold eyes looked right at me. Long story short, I Usain bolted all the way back to my house and locked everything down like Fort Knox. A few weeks later after my friends telling me I was full of crap, we went back to the car, again in the daylight, and it was still there. Numbers breed courage I guess and we went right up to the car and looked inside. It was definitely just a dummy, and it had some kind of MacGyvered fishing line contraption that one could crudely control the dummy head with. The line ran out the other side of the car and around back of a tree a little ways into the swamp. Someone was there that day, and they knew I was looking at the car. While this can be explained, the image still creeps me out to this day. It was around the time of planking craze. I had no idea what it was and hadn't heard anything about it. Got a taxi into town and was walking around the city center and life was normal. I then take a turn into the town square and there was around 200 people planking everywhere on everything. I don't know what was going on. I thought there may have been gunshots or a bomb. Or maybe the world was ending. I then asked someone next to me and they explained it and we laughed it off, but for that brief moment of time I'll never forget that uneasy feeling. The fact that the planking era and flash mob era overlapped is vastly underappreciated. I used to live on a farm and one morning there was a full horse leg on our driveway. Like still had part of the hip attached and was fresh. We sprinted down to our horse paddock to find all our horses completely fine. We disposed of the leg and never got an explanation. Very creepy. P.S. This happened in Canberra, Australia so there's no mountain lions or bears around here. A man with freshly exposed bone on his arm and missing a substantial amount of skin and muscle walked up to me in a parking lot asking me calmly for cigarettes. It really freaked me out, and told him I was calling 911 for him. He immediately ran off and I gave his description to 911. There wasn't much blood but the guy clearly needed immediate medical attention. This was in San Jose on an afternoon about 5 to 6 years ago. Still have that image giving me nightmares to this day. There's a homeless guy that gets sent quite regularly to a hospital in Dallas. Dude has nothing other than bones from calves down. Just skeleton feet. What happened was when the freeze hit a year or so ago frostbite started taking everything away. He won't let doctors remove them because the local kids pay him like $10 to see it. The smell is so bad the nurses and doctors, from a level 1 trauma center, will gag, puke, even cry because of how awful that stench is. Nothing comes close to describing it. Me, my two brothers and our uncle were running down the lake in his boat on a beautiful summer's day. Blue sky as far as the eye can see. Until we looked towards the north shore line, and saw a smallish passenger jet flying low. Until it went below the tree line and disappeared. We were flabbergasted, because our family has been in the area for over 100 years and there is not an airstrip in that direction, anywhere. There was no loud bang. No fireball, nothing. No way it had crashed. We still don't know how it was possible that it did what it did. I'm not sure why this came to mind, but I still haven't been able to figure it out. Shortly after I'd started a new job, I accidentally jumped the wrong bus home. It was the same line as my usual bus but it ran an adjunct route that dropped me a mile or two from where I needed to be. It was a Simpsons moment, the bus driver turned around and told me, this is the end of the line, you have to get off. I began my trek to the park and ride and took my liberties cutting through various vacant and business lots. 
One such lot was a construction supply yard, full of cement forms and heavy equipment. I definitely didn't belong there, so I was feeling a bit on edge as I crept through. I saw something out of the corner of my eye that startled me so badly that I yelped, it was an animal roughly the size of a small dog with long ears like a rabbit, but it was standing on its hind legs, and when it saw me, it took off, jumping the way something like a kangaroo would, bounding large distances with just its hind legs and its front legs tucked in. It was fast and it disappeared so quickly that it made the moment all the more surreal. I think some of us know the feeling, it was like I'd seen something I wasn't supposed to have seen. I wrote it off as being some kind of very large jackrabbit at the time, but when I got home and did a little research, jackrabbits don't move that way, nor are there any species that even remotely resemble that in my area, northern United States. Maybe it was some kind of escaped exotic animal. It creeped me out and helped me cover the long walk back to my car that much more quickly. This is called a phantom kangaroo. It's a documented phenomenon where people think they see kangaroos where they aren't. Kinda weird but you're not alone. LOL, I thought you were joking, but I had to be sure. Not really creepy but I was walking down the street on my way to the store when a large dog jumped through a glass window from a second story of a house and landed on the front lawn, I tried knocking on the door and got no answer from them or any of their neighbors, so I called animal control and stayed with the dog, who other than a few scratches was okay. Once they arrived, they called the police to investigate because even the animal control lady had no clue what would cause a dog to do that. Edit, the dog did not knock on the door. It was 1984. I was 15 years old and was alone at my older sister's house. It was late morning, I had just got out of the shower, still wrapped in a towel when I heard a noise outside. I looked out a window and watched a complete stranger tying the doorknob of the main entrance to the railing of the deck with a rope I used to walk the dog with. He then leaned a mop, that was on the deck, against the door. I called my sister, told her what happened, got dressed, got the heck out of the house through a different door and hid in the bushes until police arrived. The house was somewhat remote with no close neighbors. Found out later the door he tied up was unlocked. No clue how long he had been lurking around before I knew of his presence. To this day we have no idea who that was and what his motives were. Beyond creepy definitely unexplained. My family had the car packed up for a road trip because we were moving across the country from the Pacific Northwest to the Rust Belt. We were heading to the highway to get out of town and had to take some weird access road to get there. On the way, there was some man holding a long barrel rifle to a woman's head, walking through a vegetable garden. He was holding it with one hand, and had a cigarette in his mouth, the woman was crying. My mom didn't believe me. I was 14, I know what I saw. On a trip to Gulf Shores, Alabama. Stopped to gas up at some rundown gas station that was also a truck stop in Mississippi. Went to the bathroom and as I'm standing at the urinal I had the strangest feeling that something was off. This strange feeling overwhelmed the entire left side of my body. I don't claim to be supernatural or have any weird feelings slash premonitions and I have never experienced that feeling before that day or since. Anyways, I get up on my tippy toes to look to my left where the stalls were located. There was this deranged looking white guy with nasty, greasy ass hair and a effed up scowl on his face staring directly at me. The most typical looking psycho killer you could imagine. He had to have been standing on the toilet because I could see his whole face and the upper part of his shoulders. Immediately zipped up and got the F out of Dodge. Didn't even wash my hands. When I was young, me and my cousins found a bloody shirt in our woods. My cousins and their parents hunted so we thought maybe it was from that. But then we found a Ziploc bag with shoes and shorts, all had to be from an extremely petite woman or an older kid. When we told our uncle about it, we got punished and weren't allowed to talk about it. I don't speak to them anymore but really makes you wonder. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.